I like what Bill Shorten uh, told me is looking at some sort of website that might then have these are what you should be charged. But I have to say, I don't know that's sufficient. One is because you're looking often at very vulnerable people, say people maybe with mental health problems or, or whatever, developmentally delayed or something. Uh, a provider they would trust, uh, that was the NDIS registered, right? Would say, this is what it costs and I'm going to charge it to the government, don't you worry. It's not just a ripoff for taxpayers. That, that vulnerable person would say, yes, 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 but it comes out of their budget. As you put it, there's a budget. And soon, if they're paying five, six, seven times more than the thing's worth, they run out. I think it's just so disgusting. We probably need more than a website. We're going to need a lot more to chase up these people. If ever there was a government scheme that needed greater regulation to protect the beneficiaries, it's the NDIS. Uh, Minister Shorten is right. Better information and pressure on those unscrupulous providers uh, is overdue, and I'd support that as a, an immediate step that can be taken, relatively cost-effective step. But we need to go a little bit further. If you're registered to be a provider under the NDIS, if you're under that regulation, the regulation should be stronger to require a greater commitment to ethical behaviour. Price gouging and price escalation shouldn't be allowed under a taxpayer-funded scheme. But let's take that bigger step and separate out from the NDIA its role as both price setter and funder, put in place an independent pricing body to oversee these types of circumstances, but also to ensure on behalf of people with disability and the taxpayer that we're getting the most effective scheme possible and we're managing every cent Absolutely. to the best of our ability.